Welcome to the Father Stage. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. This is going to be a very, very mama mia, hola, si senor, interesting show. Because we're talking about something that is shocking to me. And it's hard to shock me. Is the earth round or is it flat? I have two experts here today to debate that issue. On my right, I have with me Mark Sargent. Mark, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And what were you doing prior to become a flat? He's a flat earther. I am. Be it's true. Prior to becoming a flat earther, what type of work? You worked in software. I did. I taught proprietary software for 20 years. And uh -huh. before that, I played video games for a living. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and on my, well, that's on my right. And on my left, I have me Dr. Jeff and his last name. I would never be able to pronounce it. <laughs> Dr. Jeff, what's your last name? Zwering. Zwering. They, are you Jewish? <laughs> No. How you um, here to be swearing? Not swearing, swear, swearing. I, what is that? Are you? It's Dutch. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome, man. Thank you. It's good to be here. And so you are a Christian. I am a Christian. And what kind of work you did before you became a Christian? Uh, <laughs> well, I became a Christian when I was pretty young, so most of my work has been as a Christian. But I do uh, work at UCLA. I work as a research faculty there. I do research on uh, high energy astrophysics stuff. I also work at Reasons to Believe, talking about how science and Christianity work together. Oh, good. Well, thank you for coming, man. Glad to be here. I told you, I'm happy to have both of you here because I have no idea how this flat earth thing came about. And so, Mark, you're like one of the leading people in this whole flat earthy earth idea, right? Yeah. Have you always believed that the earth was flat? No, no, not at all. At one point, you believed that it was round. Uh, we don't even say round. We say a globe or ball or sphere because technically a dinner plate is round. A dining room table is round. But yes, I was in the globe camp all the way up until the middle of 2014. And what got your attention to, uh, for you to start believing that the Earth is flat? Some really odd YouTube videos that talked about flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere that really caught my attention. And then I researched it for about nine months, just because I tried to debunk it. Nobody goes into flat earth loving it right away. They all hate it. They, they think it's a horrible, horrible idea. And after nine months, I said, you know what? I'm going to put a series of videos on YouTube, and I'm going to say, all right, somebody shoot me down. Somebody in academia, and I called it the flat earth clues, and everything started taking off. But it's you got to... You start to believe this by playing video games first. You saw it in the video games. I also saw it in the in the games, but it didn't. I I was into simulations and simulation theory, you know, like the the movie The Matrix or the Thirteenth Floor and stuff like that. But I never occur, it never occurred to me that it was flat, even though all simulations are flat. And then yeah, when it, it it went hand in hand. So when I looked at flat Earth, it's like I looked at it from a, a technical. If I was going to build it from a simulation point of view, and everything worked really nicely. Are you 100% sure the Earth is flat? I am now. I, now. I, I wasn't uh, four months into it. The beginning of 2015 when I made the series, I wasn't. But uh, it's been running now since then really heavily. And there's so many people involved with so many facets I hadn't even looked at. That yeah, we're living, it's not just flat. You're living in a, in a building. Uh, no different than this. Uh, a giant stage with walls and a floor and a ceiling. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Do you smoke pot? I don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't. But that's a good question. <laughs> And so, Dr. Jeff, you, uh, uh, you believe the Earth is round. I do, yes. And are you 100% sure the Earth is round? Uh, to the best I can measure it, yes. You don't believe it's flat at I all? I do not, no. When did you hear that the Earth was flat? And what was your first impression when you heard it? Uh, I guess the first time I heard it, I mean, you know, I, I hear lots of things, and so I was like, oh, kind of interesting. I don't know why somebody would think that. Or, <laughs> so I've kind of looked at it a little bit. And what, what I find interesting, if I'm honest about it, when you first start looking at some of the things, they, the, the evidence they put out is kind of compelling and hard to wrestle with at, at some of it. And, uh, but as I've looked through certain key places or certain key or places where they say, okay, this is evidence of flat, as I've dug into the details, I find it not so convincing after I've looked at some of the more some more of the details. What's not convincing about it? Um, well, I think one of the things uh, that I have yet to hear is, you know, we, we talk about, you know, being able whether you can see curvature around, and you know, if I could refer, to, you sent me a video uh, a couple of days ago, and, yeah. and you make a comment in there that uh, you're on Whidbey Island looking over at Seattle and right. you say, oh, we shouldn't be able to see Seattle because there ought to be hundreds of miles of curvature, or hundreds of feet of curvature. Feet of curvature. I'll be, be right yeah. there, hundreds yeah. of feet of curvature. And so I just sat down and did some calculations and uh, according to my calculations, that should be about 70, maybe 80 feet. 
or less. And so the fact that you can see Seattle actually fits very comfortably within what I would expect in there. Mm -hmm. But I think to me the biggest reason why I think the globe is, or why we live on a globe, the Earth is a globe, is that when I look at how things work, you know, I, I'm an astronomer, so I right. get to study what's going on in space. Yeah. I'm also a physicist, so I study how instruments work here. And when we look at gravity, let's just say that, because that's very different in mm -hmm. how a young or a flat Earth and a, and a globe Earth could be very different. Yeah. But what I find interesting is that when I make, when you go and make measurements in the lab of how does gravity work, it, it works out a certain way. And when then I then apply that to how moons orbit around Jupiter, which we can see them being spherical in nature. And when I look out at distant galaxies and how stars rotate around galaxies, that one formulation of gravity explains all of that data without seams, even here on Earth. And so to me, just the most natural thing is if it works everywhere else, why would we expect this to be any different? Mm. And you say? I'm saying that if we were in a giant planetarium, as it were, you know, you see the same things you're talking about. You see a moon, you see planets, and you see stars. They're just objects in the sky, they're just lights. They're just part of a giant projection system. You can make them do whatever you want. And yes, I know mm -hmm. you're saying, well, they all look spherical, but we're the only things that's flat. It's like, no, you're in a building and everything you see isn't what you think it is. So gravity, and by the way, to your, to your point of gravity, uh, gravity is, you know, you say it's a magical molecular magnetic force that pulls things down to the center of a sphere. No, I don't say that. Well, okay, Ma most <laughs> mainstream science. I mean, even your, your, the, the most public of mainstream science, Neil deGrasse Tyson, even he says, no, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. And, and so they say, oh yeah, it's a force that pulls things down to the center of a globe. And we say, well, it's a force that pulls things down to you know, a flat surface. Mm -hmm. And, and let, me, let me clarify here, because yeah. some people are going to yeah. say, you know, what is the flat Earth? And, and would, would you mind, Ke Kelly, can I see the models real quick? You and you know we're shown this when we're six years old, and, and this is the ball, and it's yeah, the Earth around Earth. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Spherical Earth spinning at a thousand miles an hour, going around the sun at fifty, sixty thousand miles an hour, and that whole solar system is going sideways at mm -hmm. half a million miles an hour, and so on, and so on. What's interesting though is, and this would be more or less a representation of the flat Earth, a right. self-contained system roughly the same size. But here's the big difference. This can't exist on its own. It uses a huge support system to survive, meaning you need a sun and a solar system and a galaxy and a universe, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. a universe around it, where this needs nothing. This is just, you know, if you look inside it, there's, there's your world. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why couldn't that be possible? In fact, if it's easier to understand, which is why it's been catching on as fast as it has, if this is easier to understand than this, because this takes yeah, huge right, amounts yeah. of math, geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics and everything you specialize in, why wouldn't people be attracted to this? Well, and, and it may be, and I'll say straight off the top, I can't prove the Earth is not flat. Hmm. In the sense that if we're talking prove 100% equivocally, there's no way I can get around. I mean, I've listened to what you say. Sure. And you provide a case for a flat Earth. Right. Um, so to the extent someone can provide a case for a flat Earth, I can't prove that it's 100% wrong. Right. Now, this is, this is the, the challenge I have or why I wrestle strongly with it is that one, um, there's a lot of data that personally I have as well as scientifically I have that just points to the Earth being round. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I would say, you know, we've got pictures from uh, going to the moon, and I know you dispute all of that. And so, yeah, so we're talking yeah, about various things there. Um, but there, there's a lot of things that uh, the simplest explanation is that there's, we're actually on a globe. Now, as I've listened to you and as I've thought about it, in order for the Earth to be flat, you know, there are some measurements we could make here that we could dabble with, mm -hmm. but there needs to be some very high level of conspiracy conspiring against us to make all of that true. And, and you've admitted you're yeah. a conspiracy. No, I am a you conspiracy, like conspiracy guy. Oh, yeah, I love them. And so you've admitted there's, there's some high level of conspiracy. Yeah. Um, just in the people I've worked with, I find it very hard to have that level of conspiracy that holds together coherently. Got it. Um, I've tried to have parties for people, and it's very hard, even for a short period of time, to keep the party quiet. Sure. Um, and those are people who really want it to happen. So I, I just struggle, you know, to have a global conspiracy of that level is hard. But even deeper, and this is, you know, coming at it from a Christian, I find something more troubling is that if indeed that we live on a flat earth, that the, the creator or whoever's put this in place has done things in a way to hide reality. 
Sure. And I could deal with humans are weird, humans are evil, humans want to hide things, I can do that. Yeah. A creator who both wants to know us but hides himself at that level is really difficult for me to wrap my and, mind and around. I have heard this before, and that is, are you saying that God is being deceptive? Because if God is all good and all powerful, can he also be deceptive in this case? Would he be, is it a trick? Because, you know, if it's a trick, we're talking about somebody else. And I would, I would respond with, well, what if it's not a trick or a deception, but a test, like a puzzle to be solved? more than anything else. It's something, and let me, let me answer your, your first part, which is, you know, can a conspiracy be this big? I'm not saying, like, for example, 99% of the NASA people that work there that turn the wrenches and build the fuel systems and build the, the capsules and everything, they wouldn't have to be in on it. Only the telemetry guys would have to be on it. And that would be the same with any space agency. See, the, the problem I have with that is yeah. that I have a, you know, one of my respected spiritual mentors is one of the telemetry guys. And so for me to have this guy who's a guide for me to understand and live the Christian life also be involved in a conspiracy, that's a pretty hard thing for I, me to swallow. I, I hear you. I absolutely hear you. Look, I had a chance to uh, speak with uh, astronaut Terry Virts uh, during a thing uh, in, in London. And uh, somebody asked me, it's like, are you calling Terry Virts a liar? And I'm going, look, he's a colonel in the United States military. He follow, you know, it's a full bird colonel. He follows orders and he does what he's told, even if he objects to whatever is happening there. Now, I can't speak to your friend. I don't know what aspect of telemetry he's in, but yes. He works he, at flight navigation throughout okay, the solar he, system. How do we communicate would, with satellites that are out be there? He's very heavy into that. He so. would be very close to... Let me ask you something about sure, your flat earth thing. Yeah. So are you saying that the earth is in here yeah. and we're surrounded with this? It's, it's almost, yeah. And so the earth is in there. Yep. And are we in there too? Yes, everything's in there. The and sun. So we're not the on the outside of this. There doesn't have to be anything on the outside of this. That's the other thing which which is so hard for people to break out in. That is, there doesn't have to be space. A lot of people say, well, is that just floating in space? And it's like, well, who says there has to be space? Because if space is simulated in there, like it is in a planetarium, there doesn't have to be anything outside. I mean, it could be, biblical side, could be God's footstool. So you're saying that this is not floating in space? Somewhere? No, no, it it's could be. It's somewhere? And could so be, if, could if I get what you're saying. That's this is the sum total of reality. Could be the sum <laughs> total of our beyond. reality as our, as we know yeah, it. No, now, fair of course, enough. Okay, of sum course. total of our physical reality. And and think, but if there was sum total, wouldn't we all be aware of this instead of this? No, no, because it's so because physically that thing would still be. Oh, I mean, I know the scale's a little bit off. That would thing would be at least twenty thousand miles wide. We're talking about something that's so big that everything, everyone you know would have never ever figured. Even we didn't even have the tech to detect this thing until about 1960. I mean, remember NASA wasn't formed until 1958, and then the Antarctic Treaty was put into place where they locked down Antarctica. Coincidentally, the same time the Van Allen radiation belts were discovered. But that's a whole other thing. But is that ice around the edge of the Earth? On the inside? Oh. On the inside, the Antarctic coastline is the only constant that would not look anything like this. That is, Antarctica would be stretched around the entire outer edge. But the Antarctic coastline wouldn't be the edge of the world. There would be no cosmic waterfall. It would still go in thousands of miles. And again, that's what Admiral Byrd, our, you know, the, the uh, youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, he explored for the last 30 years of his career, from 1928 until his death in 1956, 1957 where he explored Antarctica, and then finally they, they locked it down. But let me, I, I gotta address something real quick, because again, I know we have a ton of time, which is the biblical side of things. Because yeah. I, I know, I, you know, I read up in your biography, and I like it. I love the fact that you're trying to mesh in some way, uh, shape, or form, you know, science with religion. I think it's a lofty goal. Don't know if it's gonna happen. But, to, <laughs> I know, it's, it's a great goal. I mean, you and I are on the same page with some of, some are of the stuff. Are you a stuff. Christian? I am a Christian. I you was, believe in God. Absolutely, I believe oh, in God. God. In fact, one of the default things of believing in this is that it was created. Default. If you believe that the, that the world was created, you know, in, in the shape of a, a soundstage, then it was built by someone. And then you only have two choices. It's like, okay, well, uh, an advanced civilization that we don't know about or the divine. And really, at that point, you're just splitting hairs. But there's some biblical stories with, which work so much better with this than it does with this. Uh, for example, uh, and I'm not going to quote chapter or verse exactly, the story of Joshua when he asked uh, to hold the sun, uh, God to hold the sun mm -hmm. and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could slay more enemies, right? So much tougher to do in a heliocentric model because you have to stop the earth, you have to stop the solar system and everything right. around it. I mean, you have to stop it. No, you don't. So, so yeah, you stop the rotation of the earth. No, you don't. To stop the sun and the moon in a heliocentric model? 
It, you have to realize there's a description of what they see in the sky. There are phenomena that make it look that uh, way. My point, so, my point, you're, you're, and that is, it's, if you're just talking about phenomena in the sky, it's much easier to hit pause on this than his pause on this. And one more thing, well, if we're going down that road, how about the Tower of Babel? That's one of my favorites. That is a bridge to heaven, right? Big tower going up there. Well, where's it going if it's on a spinning ball that's spinning this way, going this way, and going sideways in all these directions? That tower's going nowhere. Build a tower in here, you know exactly where it's going. The biblical model, and, and I'm, I, again, I'm on your side in a lot of ways. The Bible is a flat earth book, in our opinion. There's only one chapter and verse that even comes close, and that's Isaiah 40, 22, which says, He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Mm -hmm. Again, circle's not ball, it's not globe, it's not sphere, it's circle. That's a circle. Right. You say? I would say the Bible is largely silent on what the shape of the earth is because one, most people throughout the history of earth wouldn't know what it was. Right, right. <laughs> and it's only in fairly recent times that we've been able to do that. So, you know, in, in this sense, if we were to find out at the end of the day that the earth is flat, it wouldn't really bother me. There's nothing about biblically that would one way or the other bother me with that. Oh, no. And I, what, again, what I would go back to is the fact that I do find a coherence in the way God sustains creation. And the fact that I can see, you know, as we're studying what's going on out in the cosmos right. is so consistent with what we see here that fits very well with a God who's the creator of everything. Hmm. How that is, we're studying what goes actually what actually happens here on earth, and that I can drop balls, those sorts of things. Right. Whereas what's going on out there is not. That seems a little incoherent for a God, again, who wants us to know him. And I, I hear you. Uh, I would respond with God. Because people are saying, are you saying that, because I say you don't have to have a solar system or a galaxy or, or universe. Like even Carl Sagan said there's an awful lot of wasted space that doesn't seem to be doing anything. And I know we can get into dark matter and mm -hmm. dark energy, but let's not. Uh, so, well, I think but, you can make an argument that the universe needs to be the way it is for, hu for life to be here potentially, in the universe. Potentially, but at the same time, I would also say that God's more efficient than that. So I'm not saying that God's lazy. You're just like, why? well, God can make everything, including a giant solar system. It would be effortless. It's going, yeah, but God's also really efficient. And that is if 99.99% .99 of the population believe the world that is presented to them, stars and the planets are whatever they are told, even though I believe they're signs and wonders and a giant clock system, does that clock system have to be millions of light years away? Can't it be close and intimate and made just for you? Let We've had a lot- Are there other planets inside of your flat earth? Well, yes, but they're not, they're not something you can land on. They literally would be like planets in a planetarium. They would be lights in the sky. So, 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 so would Jupiter actually exist or is it one of those things that is just projected up onto the dome. It, it would, well, yes, it would just be a projection. Okay. Again, Jupiter in this would be no different than Jupiter in a planetarium. And I've had people, uh, amateur astronomer, astronomers, who have said, I've seen the moons of Jupiter in, a, um, uh, you know, in my telescope. And I say, fine, take a pair of binoculars, go to a planetarium, look at Jupiter. Does it look more or less real with your binoculars? They say, well, we're in a building. I go, yeah, but who's to say when you walked out of that building? You're just not in, a, in another building. And sorry, one, one more thing yeah, I got to uh -huh, mention, yeah. which is I can't begin to tell you, and, and I don't know if, if this appeals to one side or not, the amount of people that have been brought back to spirituality. I was away. I mean, look, I was raised born again, Christian, vacation, Bible school, mm -hmm. summer camp, Camp Malibu, all that fun stuff. I was really into it. But when I got into tech and software, a lot, like a lot of people, we fall away. When I got into Flat Earth, I snapped right back into spirituality. And I cannot tell you the wave of people that have gotten into this. At least half of our members are really, really strong Christians because of the default thing. And that is, if it was built, there was a creator. Inside of your Flat Earth, there are other planets, right? Planets that you can't land on. Are they spinning or are they just sitting flat too? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know what exactly they are up there other than their lights. I mean, look, we didn't even have HD televisions 20 years ago. So what, what projection system they're using, I have no idea. Other than you can't land on them, you cannot go there. This thing about flat Earth is not a new idea. A long time ago, years ago, they thought that the Earth was flat. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Well, in some sense, it really makes a lot of sense because it makes sense you go out and look. Well, back then, <laughs> the Earth is a pretty good, big, big place. And for you to see and actually measure the effects of it, you, it's, it's a pretty sizable place. For you to measure the effects of it, you got to cover a lot of area. So, it, it, I mean, things look flat to a first first approximation. And so, in the older day, they said the Earth was flat. Then they realized that it's round. What caused them to believe that the Earth is round and not flat? 
You know, I, I'd have to go back and look at the history of it. I just, I do know that at least a fair bit of that discussion is as we're looking out and seeing these other bodies out in the heavens where you can see Venus rotate on its axis. Right. You can see Mars rotate on its axis. You can see Jupiter rotate on its axis. You can see the sun rotate on its axis. If, if we fit within that system of things, it's kind of natural for us to think we rotate on an axis. So you believe it's a conspiracy that we went to the moon? Oh, good Lord, that's, yeah, that's just the tip of the iceberg. you think that's a conspiracy? Yeah, that's the tip of the iceberg there, and that is not, it's way bigger than that. What I'm saying is so the only you, reason we have space programs at all is to keep this thing going as long as possible. I mean, they discovered it in 1960, and they said, they figured out it was a, a real risk to civilization as we know it. They were afraid of what might happen. And so they said, okay, 1958, NASA was formed, and they so militarized the space. the astronauts who have gone up there and walked around, and we saw them walking around, were right. they walking on flat Earth or around Earth? They were walking on a soundstage in an Air Force base somewhere. Are you serious? Oh, absolutely. You believe that? So, I, I don't. I just find it hard <laughs> that that many people are that unethical. You know, I mean, well, especially when you go back and you look at Neil Armstrong as he's and, and the, the astronauts that are going there and they're talking about scripture and seeing yeah. God's majesty and creation that then come back and say, oh, I've got to lie about this. That's inconsistent oh, with uh, Christian uh, care. I agree. I agree. And but at the same time, look, they were military. I mean, one heck, one of the Apollo astronauts was a lieutenant general. I feel bad for Neil. Neil became a recluse after it was all over. He drank and, and just did not make any public appearances. I think all the Apollo astronauts, which is why the, the guys now, you know, they signed the disclosure agreements and they don't have to do anything. I think the Apollo astronauts wanted to be heroes. And like the movie Capricorn 1, they were told at the last minute, okay, we're not doing this. Here's why. You follow the script and you do it. You signed up for it. You signed the disclosure agreement and that's it. Just as the United States was the first nation to reach the moon in the 20th century, so too will be, we be the first nation to return astronauts to the moon in the 21st century. Why would they want to deceive us? Though? What would be the purpose of that? Power, control, well, nothing. How are they gaining power by deceiving No, no, us? retaining power. More Meaning, if you've built up a civilization, especially since Copernicus, that is, you build a civilization on science. Look, science has been the trendy religion for 500 years. They have been beating all the other five religions over the head with, a, with textbooks for that long. And then all of a sudden, you're going to come along and say, oh yeah, by the way, you might be wrong about the biggest thing. Because remember, up until NASA went up, you know, in 1958, I'm sorry, NASA was formed in 1958, but up until the Apollo missions, we didn't get up high enough to actually see what this really looked like. So until you look, what do you really know? And all of a sudden, you're going to tell people this isn't it? That undermines the, the scientific pillars. And then you're going to... The, but, but I mean, to... to to speak to that, at least, I mean, you know, I, I would agree there are some people who will be manipulated that way. But right. you look throughout Christian history and there are people who are willing to die yes. for what they say. And, yeah. and to find that there are no Christians that work in the space program. And you'll find that the space program was replete with Christians. Right. But there are none of them that are willing to stand up. You're going to be That's working. hard to, that I, is just I, really hard I, to I, buy. I, I know, I know. And I, trust me when I say I wish, you know, I... I wish people had more conviction to be the whistleblowers, but who are you going to go to? Who are you going to go to? Are you going to go to the media? You're going to go to the New York Times? You're going to go to CNN? You're going to go to Fox? I, I guess where I'm going with this is, or what I would, it's, I, I see that you could have a conspiracy dictated by force and that there are some people who are going to kowtow to the power. Sure. But when you look at what Christianity does and has done throughout history, right. there have been far more onerous powers with far more detrimental consequences. I'm pretty sure none of the astronauts would have lost their life for speaking out. Ooh, or possibly, they, but even if, they, even if they would. High, high treason. Even if they would. Yeah. There are people throughout history that have shown themselves willing to do that because of what Christ requires. I, so the fact that there are none of those in the space program is just I, I incredulous. Don't know. I'm, I'm not, not saying. 
Okay. I am not saying that there aren't some of those people. Of course, there's some fantastic Christians out there. Of course. But there are layers. Of, look, they've had 60 years to, to put this thing in place as far as, you know, put the safeguards in place. Monitor phone calls, monitor emails. And, of course, they've got leverage on everybody. I mean, look, I'm lucky I didn't ha get married or have kids. So many people. I mean, all you have to do is find your pressure points and then squeeze. You know, your spouse, your kids, your relatives, your legacy, they can find a way to shut you up. Neil, uh, Neil Armstrong was a perfect example. When he, you know, he finally went on stage with Bill Clinton and said, you know, Will, you know, you've got so much more to do with this cryptic message if you can remove one of truth's protective layers. No one had any idea what he was talking about. And that was in the late 90s, I think, or early 2000s. So you actually believe that all of these men and women who are Christian and not the women involved, yeah. and they all know this, but they would not tell us. No it's, one would mention it to anyone. Who are the, It's not that they don't want to. I mean, you would mention it even if you mentioned it at the dinner table, and you told Grandma, and you know Grandma going to tell somebody. People can, people, right? <laughs> Grandma, of course. People can keep <laughs> secrets, though. Secret, not secrets like that, are kept. People oh, don't come keep on. The, the, so, some people can right. keep secrets. People cannot keep secrets. Yeah, and they can. You're, you're right, the Benjamin Franklin, how do you keep a secret between three people? You kill two of them. I get that. <clears throat> but at the same time, the Manhattan Project was a great example, even though I think this is way less than the Manhattan Project in terms of sheer amount of people that are working on refining uranium. And that was they refined it in three different locations around the country, and nobody knew about the atomic bomb until they were dropped. Mm -hmm. Secrets can be kept. I mean, look, we, we have spies. You know, anyone know any spies? We have, tech, categorically, we don't have any spies. Before a U-2 spy plane was shot down over Russia in the 1960s, we didn't have a spy plane. Uh, the SR-71 went through its inception to retirement. Didn't exist. And my favorite line was from a general, at the, the Air Force general, when they say, oh, what are you going to replace it with? Oh, nothing. Are you kidding? Of course there's more spy planes. Of course there's more secrets. So, so how do you... How do you uh, it, I could, let, let's just say we can get around that there's humanity could actually keep a, a conspiracy at that level. Right. There does seem to be, it's like, okay, so where is, where does God play into that? Because there seems to be a divine conspiracy as well, that God is keeping us from this. Cause, I, and I know you've mentioned in I your book that there's, God's keeping it to where this is out at the edge, to where, you know, you can't get up that high because there's not enough oxygen and right, there's right, boundaries. Right. Right. That God seems to be keeping this away from us. That's the only way I could actually imagine the human conspiracy working out is that God is facilitating yes. making it happen. Yes. So, so but now, yes, now, so God you've got God it. wanting to be known, but God God conspiring. wanting to know, but allowing us to mature on our own, allowing this thing. It's it's not just an instant test, which can be you know can be solved immediately. In this case, it takes five thousand years, give or take, or any civilization, whatever their level of technology. I mean, look at the look at God. You know, let's go into God, His wonderful designs. I mean, putting three percent salt solution in the oceans. How great is that? It limits your uh, ship exploration by 90-something percent because you can't drink the water that you're sailing on. This thing was built as a puzzle, as a test for us. Yes, God was involved. And I don't know if we so want to call So did God build this? In my mind, yes, God did and build this. And he built it so that we wouldn't see it, wouldn't understand it. Not, a, not right away, but We're eventually, yes. We're supposed to understand it. Uh, now, as we finally reached a technological level which could be detected. Not until, not seriously, think of all the things that had to be put in place before all of a sudden we figured this out. Amazing HD long distance photography, uh, high speed internet, smartphones, you know, the social, you know, social media. People can compare notes on a lot of things. Without that, nothing would happen, which is why I, literally up until 2015, I didn't even look at it. I could not see the forest for the trees. It's, well, let me just say, I'm black and slow, forgive me. <laughs> um, so we were traveling around in a ball instead of around a ball. Yes. But the, but the compass works the same way, actually. How come there have been no accidents? <laughs> That's just it. Antarctica is uh, when you get, even like what, going out to the edge and crashing? Yeah, hit, hit it inside, yeah. Oh, because Antarctica just screams go away. I mean, the, <laughs> the continent, once, once you get past the icebergs and, you know, the, the shoreline is, what, 200, 300 feet of sheer ice, then the plateau, which is Antarctica, goes up to 14,000 feet. There's no uh, indigenous land, uh, plant life, no animal life. The place just screams go away. And the compass... So, so what do you do with the... Uh, science bases that are on the South Pole. The military science bases? No, Those guys? not military. Oh They're... my God, come on, man. No, I, I, I work with people who do high energy gamma ray astronomy or high they energy are astronomy. There. Everything is authorized by the, by the governments down there. And by that, I mean the Antarctic Treaty, which was put in place in 1959, says no private corporation ever, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much clout you have, can set up shop there ever for any reason. In fact, it's not even up for debate so, until 2041. So the, the South Pole Neutrino Observatory that yeah, it's fine. measures. So that's, that's on the South Pole. 
Well, you want it's on Antarctica. How about that? So all uh, again, this is where I struggle with. There's scientists down there. I, I work course. with scientists, and I know scientists are always about how can I discover something that nobody knows. Sure. So these scientists that are very bright Nobel caliber scientists right. are knowingly telling. No, me, no, no. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. If they're, go, if they're down there on a base, get a member, the edge of this, the Antarctic coastline, however t long it takes to get to the barrier, because this isn't to scale, obviously, because remember, Admiral Byrd flying his uh, uh, Navy planes for 30 years couldn't freaking find it. Uh, they, yes, most of their stuff is close to the coastline or what you would call the, the, the South Pole. South Pole's hundreds of miles inland. Yeah, that's not that far. Not by comparison. I mean, they could have done that in planes in the freaking 40s. Would I'm the saying military that, permit the scientists from knowing this? Are they, are you saying Oh yeah, but if a scientist decided, they asked that, hey, can I take a plane and just start heading out that way? Yeah, they would eventually stop. You don't them. trust the military either? Well, it's not that I don't trust them, but come on, the military lies from time to time. But I've not heard. that much lying, right? Well, come on, <laughs> look, look at any major American war we've ever had. There's been an ulterior motive with just about every one. Look, we, we live in a world of deception. You would at least agree to that. I agree that there are people who can deceive, but it, where, where you, because some of what you're talking about, I'm actually building an experiment right now where we're going to fly a balloon around the Antarctic continent. Cool. So, in your view and my view, that's a very different journey. Yes, it is. It would be where extremely long. It would be extremely Argen. long. Right. W roughly what time scale are you talking about there? How fast does it go? It's whatever the winds go. I don't know. Even if you did jet stream winds at 110, 120, it would take a long, long, long time. I don't know. Okay, because but, but I mean, it would it would take at least at least five at least five times longer, maybe even ten times longer, because okay. because the Antarctic, uh, according to this, would be the size of Australia, roughly, mm -hmm. uh, and the Antarctic on this would be yeah at least five to ten times longer. So so the fact that we can get a balloon there around in 30 or 40 days. Have you done it yet? I, I work with people who have, and I, we will do this in a few years. So, love to see it. Okay. Love to see the test. Let me ask you: How does an eclipse work? It, well, so in you know in the globe model, the eclipses you've got two types of eclipses. One where uh, the the more common that most people are familiar with is where the Earth's shadow goes onto the moon. So you got the sun, you got the Earth, you got the moon. And the shadow of the Earth is roughly the same size as the Moon, a little bit larger. But so the the, the light from the Sun will be, or the, the light from the Sun will be shadowed by the Earth, and you'll get a shadow on the Moon. Yeah. You can also have a solar eclipse where the Earth and the Moon and the Sun are here, and then the Sun, uh, the light is blocked by the Moon, and there's a small region on the Earth where the sunlight cannot hit. In fact, I got to see that last year up in our Oregon, or I guess it was 2017 in Oregon. Where it was a pretty spectacular sight. Where'd you uh, go? It was over around the Young Life Camp up there in Oregon. So. Oh, wow. Oregon, cool. I was, so. uh, I was in Salem. Same, same time. Okay. Yeah, so it's a very similar yeah. place. So. Yeah. Do you Fa agree fantastic. With it? Uh, if you can ever go see a total solar eclipse, Everybody find some way to oh, do yeah. it. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, don't. <laughs> so do you agree with him as far as how an eclipse works? Do you agree with that? No, and I saw I saw the you same. You don't agree with it, with no, Doctor Jeff? No, no, I don't. Can doctor. you imagine that? I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I, that means I've studied much. It doesn't mean I'm right necessarily. Yeah. So. The, uh, no, well, the, do you agree the, with that? No, I don't agree with that. Uh, only because it can't be possible, of course, in something like this, because we're right. we're talking about a sun that can't be hundreds of thousands of miles wide and a moon that can't be two thousand miles wide. I'm saying that the sun and the moon, and it was gorgeous. I mean, it was. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys know? I mean, if you caught the 94, 95 percent, no. No, don't yeah, even. Being you, there, you've right, got to be during there. During totality, be is there very for the blackout around, zone. Yeah. It's gorgeous, uh, but that would be uh, being that it's gorgeous. It's also just you know you just black out part of the sun. It's easy enough. No different. It's no different. In fact, what I was watching it, it reminded me of. Uh, how we look at the moon. We see, you know, a quarter moon and a crescent moon and a full moon. But we always, whenever we refer to the sun, it's always a sun. There's no such thing as a quarter sun and a half sun until it gets the eclipse, but it's so bright you can't see it anyway. And then all of a sudden you see it and it's like, oh, wow. And, you know, you just, the same mechanism for the moon is used for the sun. Amazing. Uh, my question though, when, the, when they go to the moon and coming back, right. We, they show that the Earth is round right. and they talk about how nice it is yeah. and what's going on. Mm. They've never shown a flat Earth. No, they haven't. Major, major but major. wouldn't they show that at some point coming uh, back? Well, you're making an assumption that they were on the moon in the first place. Oh, yeah, you don't believe they Oh, even good Lord, no. No, no, no. <laughs> the Apollo, and, and by that I mean, it, 
the Apollo footage from Apollo 8 all the way through Apollo 17 uh, has been da has dated badly. It is aged in the film world really, really badly. There's a lot of inconsistencies. I could show you so many images. I just point out all these things that were wrong. Are was, you a scientist? I am not a scientist. Well, he is. He is a scientist. But well, who told you what you believe is true if you're not a scientist? Oh, so wear, if you wear a white coat, you're automatically right. You get that stamp of approval. Neil deGrasse Tyson said that, you know. He said, uh, science is right whether you believe in it or not. I thought that was pretty arrogant. Not saying you're arrogant, but no, I thought well, it was okay. a, the, the, the truth. I would, I would modify that. Science is, science is a way of discerning the truth about how the world works. Truth is true whether you believe it in or not. Ah, but that's not what he said. Well, I, I, he, he was so referring Neil deGrasse Tyson and I come from a very different worldview, well, although we both appreciate science a lot. But he, what he, where he was going was that, and I think science has taken liberties. Again, no offense to you. I'm sure you're a wonderful pillar that you, know, you can't gaze upon directly. <laughs> But, it, it, but science has taken liberties, and that is, you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Great, fantastic. You want to tell me what the core of the Earth looks like when the deepest hole ever drilled is only eight miles? No. No, you don't get to do that. And I don't care if you talk about seismic radar or whatever, because we've been seeing the cross-section of the Earth, which is supposedly 4,000 miles to the center, and we always see the same thing, you know, the red and the orange and the yellow and the white bands, right, all going mm -hmm. all the way to the center. And that has been there forever, but the old textbooks used to say, in small print at the bottom, we don't really actually know what's down there, we're just making an educated guess, which I think is fair, but eventually that text was removed, and then it became gospel, not to mix well, well, but there, there's a difference there, because um, when we're first trying to investigate something, there's lots of ideas we don't, we don't know, but the more we study, the more the data does point to certain uh, things. Point, point, but science hates putting a question mark in a book. They would, they would never release a book with a cross-section of the earth with a giant question mark inside. They hate that. They, it's like, no, no, we are the authority. We've got the coats. We're going to put our stamp. This is what we think it is. No, that's, uh, again, I've worked with enough scientists that it's, that it's not, we're the authority. You've got to trust us. Part of what's beautiful about science is that you can go out and replicate the experience. Now, obviously, the bigger the experiment, the harder it is to replicate. Right. But here's one I would love that I think we could do. That, you know, I know you've looked at how can you measure this? How can you test this? Right. Um, you know, and let's go back to the moon landing. Right. Um, if the, the moon landing is correct as it's described, yes. then there are, there's a buggy on the moon. Oh, boy. There's retro reflectors on the moon. Mm. <laughs> we could, we ought to be able to take a laser. Oh, you no, 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 you don't, you don't get to pull out that myth. Mythbusters no, no, already no, did no, it. No, it's no, like, I'm fire saying, the reflector, fire what, the laser. Why don't, you, why don't we do that? Because Mythbusters already did it. We don't believe, we, we believe that anybody that's shooting the reflector, look, the amount of photons that would come back from that thing, even if you could hit it, would be negligible at best. And you're, you're leaning towards, like, we're already expecting the photons to come back, therefore, it's all, the laser reflector. That, that all, the, it's there. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. There's way too many other things. Even if you could go down the laser reflector line, there's way too many things about the moon that don't make sense. Like, for example, why did we only have, why did Apollo 8 through Apollo 16 go there and back and nobody took shots of the Earth? And there was no blue marble shot until Apollo 17, until the last second on the way back. Or the Van Allen radiation belt question, which I love, and that is, I'll ask you, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no, in your opinion? Dead, uh, well, deadly, deadly in what sense? Deadly, like uh, people will die. You know, I, I, to be honest, I just haven't looked at it closely. All right, well, that's I, I, know fine. There, that's I know there are radiation belts up there. I, it's a matter of how much radiation is there. That's fair, and so. that is. Look, the Apollo missions went round trips multiple times mm -hmm. through that thing. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. Uh, there's still five of these guys walking around today, right? How did they do that with aluminum and plastic shielding? And you say, well, then they're probably not that deadly, right? No, no th th again, there, there's. You know, if, if you're going to say the moon, ref the, the retro reflectors are more complicated, you know, even with a little bit of knowledge, it's like, you know, what radiation is dosage and time scale and all that sort of got stuff. It, got and it. So, you know, w this would be somewhat a pointless debate here because I don't have the details. That, that's to be okay. Able you, to don't investigate you don't it. have so, to in this case so because, let me well, do this. I need to ask, we ran out of time. Ah. So I need to ask some black people questions. Um, <laughs> dumb questions. Those are, those are questions. Um, Mark, do you believe in gravity? I do. I wrote down a lot of good questions I want to ask you guys. I do. You believe in gravity. I do. And you believe that too, right? I, yes. Uh, will we need that for this? The, Gra round, the flat earth? Gravity? Uh huh. Yeah. On the inside of the ball, the, the gravity will be in there to hold us. Yeah, that, that with a combination of, of air pressure, which is a whole other thing. You would just explain gravity operates by a different mechanism than what it would say to make 
a moon orbit around Jupiter. So right. we both we, agree there's gravity there. He's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. We would disagree on the mechanism behind it. Do you believe in aliens? Not in that they came from Venus or Jupiter or Mars. I think that, yeah, are there things flying around there? Sure, why not? So but, are the aliens here with us or are they flying around? That's an excellent, that's a great question. Oh, and that is, I think there's older versions of us. I think the, you know, older civilizations, things that predate us. I don't think we're the first people to rent this apartment by a long shot. And so are they out here or are they in there? <sighs> Tough the call. Some of them may be inside, some may be outside. I don't know. I, I really die in to know. What do you say? I, I would say if God created this earth for us to be here, it's up to him to whether he did it somewhere else or not. So I don't know the answer to that question. I think it's a great scientific and a great theological question, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, when I was going over this last night, I was wondering, where are the aliens? You know, where are they? Inside here or outside? Well, I think there's for, a lot from inside. one aspect, if there are aliens out there, traveling through space is a really hard thing. Space <laughs> is really, really big. But it's really believe in aliens? I don't know. I, like I said, it depends on whether God created them or not. But do you believe right now whether God, do you believe there is this? Uh, if you press me, I'd say probably not. I'm pressing you. Okay, I would say no. Oh, okay. It you wouldn't would surprise no. me if God did it, but I'm going to say no, we're the only life in it. And you say? I'm saying that we, I'm saying there's other things, uh, there's other civilizations, previous civilizations that there are remnants still lying around. So no, in that the aliens are not from another planet, they're right here with us. So you're saying the aliens are human beings. Our who ancestors. Were, who were here before us. Yeah. And they'll, they managed to get out of this ball? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe they did. Honestly, if it was me, though, if I was building it, I wouldn't let them out. You would I, not let them no, out? No, I'd let them go. I'd let them go, go, I'd let so them go underground. I wouldn't let them out. So they may be under this earth. Yeah, maybe. Sure. So uh, I got to ask something else. So you believe the aliens, our ancestors, yeah. are in... Maybe under this earth. Possibly, sure. There's remnants of them all over. Sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, Bimini Road, Bosnian pyramids. Take your pick. And what do you say to that? I say humanity is very resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> We've built lots of things. And the earth changes while we're here. So. so, Martin, tell me one more time. Why would people make up this lie that the earth is round? What would be the purpose Got if it. the earth is really flat? It's, it's, really flat. it's not that they're making it up. All they're doing is keeping an existing secret, meaning it was built by someone or something. I, I will call it the divine. And all we did was when we figured it out in 1960, we just figured it, it's like, you know what? We're going to keep this thing under wraps until we can figure out a way to give it to the public. And I think we're running into that right now. How do you respond to that, Jeff? I guess I would say, uh, you know, as I read uh, scripture, I find that God reveals himself in the scriptures. You know, as we read the Bible, we figure out truth about God. God's also revealed himself in creation. As we study creation, we see his glory revealed. You know, he tells us to look to the heavens. They reveal his glory. And so I think what we find scientifically about how the, the world works, that it's a globe. And that, that really is uh, the most consistent way to see how he's revealed himself throughout creation. How are conspiracy theorists people created? How do, how you know, I, I don't know that they're created, and there's a part of me that, I, I'll be honest, I sympathize with you in this sense. You feel sorry for him? No, no. I, <laughs> no what is no. where I relate to yeah. what you're thinking? Right. Whether that's empathy or sympathy, I forget which. Sure. But, um, empathy, I think. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of times where it's like, I've been told, I've been told, and it's like, wait a second, is that really true? Mm. You know, and, and I get that's uh, the question you're asking in a lot of ways, and yeah. I think you're a little more drawn to think that there are conspiracies. But I think that is a, a God actually wants us to be asking, hey, what's going on here? What's going on? But he also, and th this may sound like I'm going against you, That's but he okay. wants us to be drawn to what is the data say and let's live by whatever the truth is. And, you know, I, I, I think what I would love to see is, uh, you know, maybe have the discussion of say, what is it that we could actually measure that we would both agree on that might settle this or at least lean it more heavily one way or the other? Hmm. And maybe let's go out and do that so that Agreed. we don't have to keep arguing, you know, what, 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 from where we're, we're arguing a common set of day that we all agree what it means. So let me ask, I noticed that a lot of young white males <laughs> and some females believe in this flat earth thing, right? Yes. So do you know why it's mostly attracted to young white males and some white females? Ah, boy, I don't know. I think if I, I can poke at that, I'm not so sure it is. I know that there are a fair number of uh, you know, like Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, there are some fairly yeah. prominent well, yeah. black people the, who've yeah. also the, thought the, that the, as well. So I, I, I don't know whether it's exclusive. I think it's I not, it's not, it's not, you think you know why? it's not exclusive. I know why white males 
Right, there are some, you know, well, black, yeah, yeah, people, yeah. black people are going to follow you no matter what. You get a few. <laughs> but I know why the white, white young males and females believe in this theory of flat earth. Oh, I know where you're going with this. What? Go what? ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Tell me, tell me. Is, is the whole flat butt thing? No. <laughs> did we just say that on TV? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I could have gone worse. Seriously, that's not no, where you're going? Because the people of color hate white people now, and white people feel feeling pushed out. Oh. So they're going to go to the flat earth. Oh, so it's a serious It's thing. a form of escape. Oh. Yeah. All right. That makes sense, right? Go people people do things for a lot of reasons. Why would you believe that you're a white male or a white female and the color people hate you? You got to find somewhere to go. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. That, it that's is. to the psychologist to analyze. I'm going to deal with each you, you, individual person. You are right. Person, it, is, so. it is some in some ways it is a form of escapism because yeah. it is a very interesting story. It's a rabbit hole like a lot of things. How are conspiracy theorists people create it? How are because conspiracy I don't think we were born created. that way. If something happened along the way that convinced you I think it's of a, something else. We all know that there's, look, it's a world of deception. People lie about a lot of things. I mean, there's lying in, in uh, politics and business and entertainment and sports. Uh, the only thing I would dispute there is I agree that there are a lot of people who lie. There's also some great things about humanity. People are very... Oh, no, no, no. I'm not so, saying so that. So it's both and, and that's what yeah. I think any worldview has to describe or has to explain. Why are there the beauty of humanity as well as the depravity you're, of humanity. You're no, I'm not saying it's all doom and gloom. No, 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 not, not by a long shot. I'm saying that we, everyone knows that we lie about a lot of stuff, but everyone's got that imaginary line that we draw. It's like, okay, I'm only going to look at the lies on that side of the line, and everything out here is unicorns and rainbows and puppies. And then when no, the unicorns don't exist, just so you know. <laughs> they don't? No, we'll get into oh, that yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but that line eventually gets moved. So you're asking how conspiracy people get uh, yes. formed. They, that, that line gets moved again and again and again. It's like, okay, there's these new lies that, or new secrets or whatever. And then, of course, the conspiracies, and it gets bigger and bigger. And then it kind of snowballs. Because once you believe, for me, it was like JFK, which was, you know, the Oliver Stone epic, JFK from uh, 1991, I think, 1992 where once I saw that, literally, until that point, I didn't think people lied. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> positions of power, it's like, no, why would anyone in power they lie about lie. anything? But once I saw that, it's like, okay, if I'm open to that, what else am I open to? And this opens you up to everything. That's very interesting. Uh, winding down question, we almost over. Do you believe, you know how the tower bills were blown up by the Allah, up by people? 9-11. 9-11. Yeah. Do you believe that was our government did that, or do you believe the radical Muslim did it? Allah u Abba, folks. Uh, I believe, and since you brought it up, I would never offer it, but uh, since you believe, yeah, I think it was an inside job. Absolutely. Really? And, yeah, and I, the only reason I'll, I'll do it. You were one of them. Uh, no, 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 I'll do it real quick. I'll do it real quick, which is, I'll just say, anyone that has any doubt, just look at Building 7. Look at it for a while and tell me why that building fell. Are you blown away right now? You hear him say that? No, he's probably It doesn't right surprise now. I mean, I've, I've, I've read a little oh, bit about him, nobody has to say, so no. it doesn't surprise me that he says that. I don't believe it. Do you believe it was an inside job? I do not. No. I, I think there are people who really want to perpetrate evil on the world, and that's yeah. what happened there. Why I don't would think our federal government, government is one want of them. to just deliberately kill that many American people? What we'll purpose? Sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. What was the greater good? Uh, in this case, securing just about everything we wanted in the Middle East, and with justification from Congress to do so. That's amazing. Mm. Isn't that amazing? <laughs>
So but he's he outside and inside. He probably pokes around and, you know, sees things. But, you Amazing. know, but I do call it God's footstool. His footstool? Yeah, sure. So he's rested up alive. Sure. What are they doing? Yeah. Amazing. Two last questions. What is a man? <laughs> what? What is a man? What is a man? No, what is, is a man? What is a man? Not a male. I know you're a male. Yeah. But what is a man? I would say a, a man is a creature who's made in God's image, whose goal and chief purpose and end is to serve and worship and honor God. What is a man? Boy, that's a tough question. Uh, so you believe in flat earth, but right. you can't tell me what a no, man no, 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 is? No, 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 it's not that. I'm just wondering, I mean, you're not doing this from the gender point of view. You're just asking, like, what's your definition of yeah, a man? Right. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, a man is, is one of, no, he's going to be in trouble here. One of, <laughs> one of two genders that was designed to work in this system. One or two genders? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, boy, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well man, man is part of a team, male and female, that were, uh, this is a clinical definition, I mean, of a man. I, I, I mean, you want to go into role models? No, you I just go, want to know what is a man. What is a man? Do you ask this of everybody? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, a man is, again, yeah, that, that's my answer. My answer, uh, a man is uh, a part of a two-person two team that is designed to help keep this thing running. The flat earth running. We say two person team, meaning yep. man and man woman. And, man and woman, yes. Okay, and the last question. Um, do you love the Great White Hope? Great, what's the Great White the Hope? The movie? Do you love the Great White Hope? I mean, the movie was okay, <laughs> unless we're talking, about, we're talking about the boxing metaphor. Like, do no. I believe that white people can box? Not the really. President. President Trump. Oh, President Trump? Do oh, you I've love never, the never. Great White Hope? Oh, that one, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I've never, never voted in my life. You never voted. No. Nope. And do you love the Great White Hope, even though you didn't vote? Not really. He's a reality television star. How much could I love him? Is that another conspiracy theory? Uh, give it. Yeah, we don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't love him? No. You don't love the Great White Hope? No. You don't love the president? Uh, no, not really. Do you? I, I will say this. I think Trump is a man who's done some really good things and done some really bad things. And as the president of the United States, the position deserves our respect. Do you love the Great White Hope? As a person, I think he's got flaws, just like the rest of us. Do? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to answer that. I love you gotta, my wife. You gotta get me I love my wife, knowing. I love God, I love my kids. Do you love the great white hope? Do you love the president? If, if you... <laughs> I don't well, know how to answer that. Just say, I, 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 I love the president. I think, yeah, I do. Do you love the great white hope? Sure, yes, I do. Why is it so hard to say that? Because <laughs> it can be construed a lot of wrong there ways, you go. so I'm saying something that I'm not. Yeah. That's my like, only reason. What, what if I say, yeah, I love Trump, that means, oh, that, people, that will paint me a whole lot of things I believe that most people think that I don't actually believe. Do you care about that? In a public forum like this, it does reflect on my ministry and my family and my wife. This yeah, is so public? I, do, I, do, I am careful about what I say. Really? But I have no problem saying, yeah, as a man, I love him. Amazing. And the last question. Are you sure? Yes. All right. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun, thank you. You're welcome. Did you have fun? No, this was awesome. Of course I did. This was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for coming. Thank you. I totally appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, share, and study. And don't forget our merch at the